like to say hello to everyone who has joined us uh, today in our study of the Word of God um, on the Day of the Lord, uh, midweek services. Uh, we are so delighted to have you to come and join uh, us today, and we are so blessed here at Bethlehem uh, for you uh, tuning in to be with us uh, in your perspective place. Uh, we're delighted as we continue to make our way through the series of studying uh, the Word of God as it relates to Jesus performing some miraculous miracles uh, throughout the Bible. And so today we're going to pick up again and look at another particular miracle that Jesus performed as it relates to uh, feeding uh, a mass of people. And so I want you to join with me and we're going to share uh, prayerfully some, some nuggets that will give us a, a, at least a different perspective uh, why and how Jesus performed uh, these uh, particular miracles. Uh, I'm going to open up uh, today with a word of prayer. And then we'll proceed into our studies together. And preferably you have a Bible in front of you. We'll put scriptures and so forth on the screens, uh, which of the translation of the King James Version. And if I'm going to quote something besides the King James, then I will let you know what I'm quoting from uh, as a reference. But again, we, we certainly thank you uh, for selecting us today uh, to join us for study uh, in your, your space. Uh, and then we ask that you uh, come with us as we just go before God in a word of prayer. Let us pray just for a brief moment. Gracious and kind God, we thank you for your majestic presence and power, for the privilege that we have laid down on last night and sometime of this day. You blessed us to see a beautiful, marvelous day. For the writer was so correct when he said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let all of us rejoice and be exceedingly glad within it. We ask that you will bless every viewer who have joined us through our way of connecting with them where they may be in their space. We thank you for all of our family members, our viewers, and we certainly thank you for those who are growing closer to you as studying the word of God. As we continue to be heightened for this Lenten season we're in, uh, reading of scriptures and prayers and meditating, fasting and making a decision to give up something for these 40 days in order to feel you and to sense your presence even more. We thank you for that. Uh, we ask that you bless us together as we share the word together and, and we invite you now to come into our hearts and our minds as we share in the, the word of God together. Now, bless us and keep us now. As we go forth, let us not mishandle your word to your people for its ultimate purpose to help us to grow and to be strong in our walk. Uh, for this is your servant's prayer we pray in faith to every viewer who join us today, and we give glory and honor to your marvelous and majestic name. It is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray, and all the people, loving people of God, said amen. We certainly thank you uh, today as we're going to pick up at miracle number 24 Miracle number 24, this miracle today we're going to review is going to be looking at how Jesus feed at least over 4,000 men, not even including women and some children. And so we're going to review this one uh, today, and we're going to see the, some of the slight differences, variance of differences, just slightly, of uh, what he did uh, feeding the 5,000 over and above what he did when he fed these 4,000 men, again, not including uh, the women and uh, the children. Let me say this from the outset, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have two videos we're going to show, small video clips we're eventually going to show you. One is the video, video showing how Jesus fed the 5,000, and then the other one eventually we're going to show a brief, these are brief video clips will show him feeding the 4,000 men, not including women and children. And then we'll look at the variance of uh, the unique slight differences uh, what transpired uh, in Jesus performing uh, these two distinct miracles. But let me say this from the outset as we get into this lesson uh, today that uh, we discovered that twice Christ works a miracle in providing food for the multitudes who had been listening to him teach uh, and, and expound upon uh, the, Holy, the Holy Scriptures. It's twice we're going to find written in the Gospels that Jesus is going to feed a mass of people. And, and the first miracle, if you recall, uh, a week or so ago, we looked at 
how Jesus fed the 5,000 uh, men, not including women and children. And after feeding this multitude uh, of that miracle that he told the disciples to go and pick up all the leftovers or the fragments. If you Bible readers know what I'm talking about. And when they got finished, they had at least 12 baskets uh, of, of fragments or what we would call leftovers from feeding that multitude over 5,000 uh, men. And, uh, and last week we looked at how they was crossing over, going to the other side of Galilee, but they still had uh, the fish and bread with them as they was going over. And in this process, we're going to lead up to this miracle that Jesus now is going to have to feed after teaching a great multitude again. He's going to have to feed now 4,000 men, not including women and the children. And so we're going to look at uh, the circumstances for the providing of the food and the compassion that Jesus had to provide for the food and so forth. And let me say this from the outset. I'm going to be using as our background references of the Gospels of Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through 10, and we'll give reference to Matthew chapter 15, verse 32 through 39. But I'm going to probably focus more so on Mark's interpretation of this particular miracle as it relates to feeding the 4,000. And I, I want to convey this to you because I'm using Mark because Mark, uh, anybody know uh, the reason of writings of the gospel writers is we know that Matthew uh, writing was written for uh, the nation of Israel. Matthew was writing for uh, the Jews. He was uh, dominantly writing for the Jewish uh, nation. Uh, and, and Mark uh, gospel, uh, Mark was writing uh, for the Romans. And anybody know the Romans were, were individuals who believe in action. They were, uh, uh, men of action who believe that uh, government and the law and law and order and they believe that law and order is the thing that controls the world. So we're going to see the paradigm unique differences of how the writer uh, Mark versus Matthew, uh, the two are the only two that record this particular miracle of Jesus feeding uh, the 5,000. Uh, we see how he uh, uh, performed these miracles but in this particular miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus, I mean, Mark and Matthew, the only two to record, not Luke nor John records this particular uh, episode. So let's look at how uh, Matthew and Mark read, does the writings of feeding of these uh, multitudes. And so as we begin, let me say this, um, that in, in, in Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through 4, uh, we're going to see how Jesus, uh, or actually the first 10 verses of Mark chapter 8, we're going to see how Jesus has some, some compassion. And he says it himself, and he has to do something about it. What I want to do, as I said a little earlier, I made a, 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 a recognition or observation to you who hear me. Uh, as it relates to that, there's going to be two videos I want to show you. One is going to be dealing with... Um, uh, Jesus uh, feeding uh, the 4,000, and then we'll come back and look at how he does it eventually to the uh, 5,000. And as a reference again, uh, myself, nor the Bethlehem Church, nor the media minister of Bethlehem have any rights. We do not own these video clips that we show you. They're just uh, for your viewing, just to give you an idea of what we're trying to drive as our main point. Uh, so we're going to have the media minister now to show this little clip to you, and then we'll come back and pick up from there. <clears throat> uh, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for all these people. You have been with me for three days now and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them off hungry. They might collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in this desert place to feed such a crowd? Jesus said to them, how many loaves have you? Seven, they said, and a few small fish. 
Then he instructed the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish, and he gave thanks and broke them, and handed them to the disciples, he gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected what was left of the scraps, seven baskets full. Now four thousand men had eaten, to say nothing of women and children. And when he had sent the crowds away, he got into the boat and went to the district of Magadan. Amen. We certainly thank you for just uh, listening to that small video clip that has Jesus uh, perform this unique miracle again, second time he does this now, feeding uh, a mass of people. Scripture calls it the multitudes. At least scholars suggest that we know there's recorded about 4,000 men that was in this uh, attendance in this 4,000 feeding. But actuality, scholars suggest to you and I, for us to take in consideration, there were wives or women, and there was children. This is, if you just add one child to this, versus if you had those who had two or three children to be along in this mass of, of following Jesus' teaching uh, in this uh, sort of a desert place, uh, that some believe it was over at least uh, ten to 12,000 uh, people that was in uh, this mass of multitude when Jesus had to uh, perform this particular miracle. Now, I want you to notice something that Jesus had been carrying out his healing miracles uh, for this great crowd, and he was teaching uh, this great crowd for a, a tremendous amount of time. And I want you to notice something. The scripture lets us know that on the third day, because the scripture said they were with Jesus for around three days. On the third day, Jesus noticed Jesus expressed compassion and concern. That's what Mark says now, uh, right there in that verse. Oh, one and two, he had great concern and compassion. And as a compassionate savior, I need to say to you, he, he, he's always concerned about the well-beings of others. Uh, the Lord Jesus uh, cares. And interestingly, and I want you to know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, that you would know how quickly that the people or the disciples at least forget what Jesus done prior in the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, although the disciples had witnessed earlier how Jesus performed the miraculous miracle of feeding the 5,000 men, not including the women and children, uh, they again expressed confusion about how this crowd was going to be fed, talking about the 4,000 now, according to how the Jews regarding time. Listen to this. The three days the crowd was without food doesn't imply they had not eaten for 72 hours and, and evening because the following day, uh, the next morning, as little as 30 hours would be considered three days. Talking about to the Jewish calendar, three days, even so, 30 hours were a long time for any individual uh, not to eat anything. But if you notice more closely uh, in the scriptures that what goes on so on profoundly is that Jesus has the compassion uh, for this crowd. And I want to share this with you because notice something in this lesson today that, uh, that in Matthew's interpretation of Matthew chapter 15, Matthew's interpretation was like this, that Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and having nothing to eat and I will not send them away fasting. That's very important. I will not send them away fasting. What do you mean? In the way he said, I will not send them away hungry. That's what one interpretation says. Matthew and King James says, I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And then verse 33 says this of Matthew 15. And his disciples say unto him, watch what they say. When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And the question comes in verse 34. And Jesus said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Let me pause right here. As you notice something that some scholars suggest that when Jesus was coming over on the other side with the disciples and they had the fish and bread from the feeding of the 5,000, they think that some of the disciples lost some, some bread and fish 
uh, on, on, out of the boat going to the other side to follow Jesus for his teaching. And so that's why uh, they don't have, as we recall reading earlier uh, in the translation of Jesus feeding the 5,000, that they had over 12 baskets. But here, Matthew's interpretation, even in Mark's interpretation, is to get ready to feed the 4,000, don't necessarily have, it says, 12 baskets. That Mark says and Matthew says they only have, in the response of the disciples in verse 34, and they said seven and a few little fishes. And now that's unique for us. That's unique for us uh, because some suggest that perhaps maybe some of the disciples lost some of the bread and fish while they was on the boat trying to get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to go where Jesus now is going to be teaching again uh, for the next two or three days. And this crowd is now following him. And notice uh, within the lesson how Jesus uh, begins to perform this. Now, what I want to do, I want to do a comparison. You can write this down if you'd like. Uh, I want to do a comparison uh, of the distinctiveness. Uh, and, and I'm going to have uh, the media guy to show slide number seven, and then we'll come back. And I want you to write this down if you can see this. And I'll explain what, I, what I'm doing here on this. I want to compare now the distinctiveness of the fourth feeding of the 4,000. There it is. And the feeding of the 5,000. Remember now, the first miracle he did, the feeding was the 5,000. The miracle we're looking at today is the 4,000. And the 5,000, you see it in the red, uh, bold red print. The 4,000 would be in the blue bold print. And watch the stink difference. I'm giving you seven distinct uh, 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 characteristics of what happened in the feeding of the 5,000 in compared to what happened in the feeding of the 4,000. Point number one is this. In the feeding of the 5,000, 5,000 people who were fed, guess what? They were Jews. They were mostly Jews. Remember now, we told, mentioned to you that uh, uh, Matthew uh, was a writer for the Jews. So you get that interpretation from out of what Matthew interprets uh, to the um, feeding of the 5,000. But now in the feeding today, in the feeding of the 4,000, the 4,000 people who Jesus feed is now Gentiles. Gentiles. Let me say it again. They were Gentiles. Okay. Point number two. In the feeding of the 5,000, the 5,000 people had been with Jesus for one day. They'd been with Jesus for only one day. That was the first miracle he did in the feeding of the 5,000. But today in the miracle feeding of the 4,000, the 4,000 crowd was, was been, had been with Jesus now for three days. That's what the scripture says. That's what Mark and Matthew says. They were with Jesus now for three days. Okay, point number three. Uh, the distinct difference between what took place in the feeding of the 5,000 over and above the 4,000 was number three. In the feeding of the 5,000, there were five loaves, a little whole cakes, and two little small fish. That was the feeding of the 5,000. You remember Jesus took those five little whole cakes and the two little fish, and he prayed over them, and he began to make bread after bread, fish after fish, until he fed over 10,000 people. Now, that's in the feeding of the 5,000. But today, point number three would be that in the 7, 4,000, Scripture says to us in verse 34 of Matthew, there were seven loaves of bread, and a few small fishes. Does not say, and the, like the feeding of the 5,000, two little fish. It said, they just said, well, a few small fishes. That mean, which could mean it could have been three, four. We don't know. Scripture does not give us how many. But the scripture do give us how many it was in the feeding of the 5,000. All right. Now, point number four is this. In the feeding of the 4,000 compared to the 5,000, that... In the feeding of the 5,000, the disciples were told to go and see what they could find. In other words, go and search the crowd. That's what they did now 
in the 5,000. But now in the feeding of the 4,000, point number four is this. The, the disciples already knew what they had before Jesus even asked them. They knew what they had before Jesus could ask them. So in other words, they did not have to go search the 4,000 crowd to see if anybody brought any food. They already knew they had some baskets and a few fish. All right. Point number five. Notice now when Jesus get ready to perform the miracle and the feeding of the 5,000, he tells the disciples to tell the people to sit down on the grass. Sit down on the grass. But when it came to in the lesson today that he had to feed the 4,000, Jesus tells the disciples to the people, set them down on the ground where there were no grass. In other words, they was out in a desert where there were no grass at this particular time in the feeding of the 4,000. I just want you to see the difference in the 4,000 compared to the 5,000, what the miracle and what was took place, took place in the doing and the performing of these miracles. Now, point number uh, six is this. In the feeding of the 5,000, it says, again, there were 12 baskets of food that were left over. 12 baskets were left over. But now in the feeding of the 4,000, there were only seven baskets of food were left over. Only seven baskets of food left over. And again, some scholars want to make the suggestion that maybe some of the disciples lost a little bit of bread and fish coming over, but I, I'm not at the deliberate to say they did or did not. I can only tell you what the word of God says, and the word of God says, I believe they had the 12 baskets and so forth, in the feeding of the, of the 4,000. <clears throat> but when Jesus had them to go pick up the fragments left over from the feeding of the uh, 4,000, they have only seven baskets, <coughs> excuse me, of food left. In principle number seven, uh, in the five, feeding of the 5,000, Jesus blessed the loaves uh, in, in the feeding of the 5,000. But in the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus gave thanks and blessed the food. He gave thanks and blessed the food. In the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus just blessed the loaves. So what are, we, what are we trying to convey here? What are we tr truly trying to, con to convey here is this, that this crowd was with Jesus for 72 hours, three days, and in the process of being with Jesus for those many days, Jesus had compassion on them. He did not want to send them to town or go back home, he, thinking they were, were going to faint. And for that reason, Jesus then tells them uh, to sit down right down on the dirt where they were, and he got ready to now perform another miraculous mi miracle of feeding of the 4,000. Now, what jumps out to me that is fascinating, I want to highlight this for you, is when it says in verse 32 of Matthew 5, uh, we're not going to send them away to go uh, to get something to eat because we send them away. We don't want to send them away. It says fasting. Question could be asked then were the people fasting before they got to Jesus. And when Jesus was teaching for those uh, three days, were they in some kind of fast? Well, I'm not sure because uh, the fasting, anybody know anything about fasting? We're doing this now because of the Lenten season. We're fasting of something. Uh, they had given up eating. Some suggest that these uh, individuals uh, were giving up some form of eating. And that's why uh, they were, quote, unquote, fasting in these three days with Jesus, these 72 hours. Uh, they had given up eating in order to draw nearer to Jesus. And I'm going to say this a little bit more about fasting, ladies and gentlemen. Fasting is a religious observation where people are willing to go without something they need or enjoy for a period of time to show one's sincerity and earnestness of their request of God. Let me say it again. Fasting is a religious observance where people are willing to go without something they need or to enjoy 
for a period of time. Like for fasting, we're talking about for 40 days. Uh, a period of time to show one sincerity and earnestness of the request of God. And more commonly associated uh, with food, there, there are a number of fasts, and you may want to keep this important and keep this interest of you. Uh, there are a number of fasts uh, that you can consider doing if it's not a food. It could be uh, one way of fasting is not watching your favorite TV program. Not watching your favorite TV program. It could be uh, you're not using your cell phone for talking or texting or listening to certain type of music. You're willing to give that up for a great length of time. It may be you're not you're not you're not going to be you're going to be willing to fast to give up something to show your discipline of one's soul and body for the greater service and commitment to God. These are some forms of fasting that you and I can do if you're not at the place that you're willing to fast at this time uh, for a food. Uh, Christ did it. Many individuals through the Bible did it, fasting of food, but that may not be, you may not be there spiritually there yet that you're able to give it up for any great length of time. But uh, if it's not food, it could very well be uh, music. It could be a uh, favorite television program. It could be sweets. It could be you are going to be willing to make a sacrifice to not be on the phone as much as you would normally be. Or it could be um, you're going to give up something that's very near and dear to you for some length of time uh, to help you to feel the presence of God even closer and more in your heart and your life that you're drawn more to God. So it's important that we uh, know uh, that fasting is critically, critically uh, important. Now, one scholar, some theologian says it like this, that, <clears throat> that when Jesus had these big old baskets uh, to feed uh, uh, the, the multitude, that these baskets or these hampers were large enough to put a, an adult man uh, inside of, in other words, these uh, hampers that he had fish and bread in were some big, humongous type style hampers. He said, well, Reverend, oh, is, there, is there a particular scripture that you could verify the size of these baskets? Because remember, said they had 12 baskets. And when they uh, got finished, they had left feeding the 4,000, had at least seven uh, baskets, seven uh, uh, baskets left. And these baskets, again, were the size that you could almost put an adult man in them. And I'm going to give you a particular scripture to show you what I mean by the size of these uh, hampers, hampers or what you would call baskets uh, that were large and big enough to hold a man in it. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts chapter 9, at verse number 25, I'm going to read this for you and show you what I'm talking about. Write it down. You can go back and lead, look at it a little more closely, if you will. In uh, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostle, chapter 9, verse 25 says it like this. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down, watch, by the wall in a basket. In a basket. This is how uh, one of the brethren escaped of the city walls by going down in a basket, suggesting the basket was large enough that even an adult man could fit down in the basket. So could you imagine if they got 12 large hampers or baskets that size with fish and bread in there? that it could feed a lot of people, but not so much as feeding a lot of people, just a simple fact that Jesus spoke it. Uh, the miracle was very, very real, and it becomes something that is very profound uh, that we can all trust and know uh, and by the word of God on today. Now, I want to say this to you, my brothers and sisters, that, uh, that there's something interesting here to notice that many people get confused with these two two particular miracles, the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000. People do get confused with uh, both of them. And I'm in the opinion that many of us uh, have the same kind of experience or like the disciples had 
even after they saw Jesus perform that miracle feeding the 5,000, some of them probably had some doubt even with this big old crowd because you could tell it the way they asked him in the 33rd verse of Matthew, Mark, Matthew ch- translation when it says, And the disciples said unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness, watch, as to fill so great a multitude? So even the disciples forgot about it, obviously, that Jesus, if Jesus fed the 5,000, that he could take care of these 4,000. But somehow they forgot about that miracle. It just, just evaded them. And I don't think we need to get too hard on the disciples because sometimes, oftentimes, we're just like them. Uh, we, we sometimes forget uh, that God, if God deliver us from uh, one thing, that when we come to a great obstacle in our lives, sometimes we get a little fearful and we forget. And if somehow we forgot that if God delivered us from that last time, that he can still do the same thing again. And so uh, I, I can understand why the disciples were not quite fully, fully sure about do we have enough food, even if we got these baskets of fish and bread. With this great of a crowd, do we really have enough? And they obviously forgot that what Jesus did in the feeding of the 5,000. Now, let me say this right here, ladies and gentlemen, also, that uh, uh, these, these uh, disciples also, uh, in this instance, uh, noticed that Jesus, uh, in the feeding of the 5,000, he set them down in increments. He set them down in an orderly fashion. He set them down in hundreds and set them down in 50s and 20s and 10s. He set them down... Uh, in an orderly fashion. But now notice in the feeding of the 4,000, he does not do that. He doesn't do what he did in the feeding of the 5,000. He does not sit them down, uh, or at least we read in the scriptures, in some type of orderly regiment as he did the 5,000. He just simply tells them where they are at, sit, tell them to sit down right where they're at. In other words, sit down right there in the, in the desert, right there in the dirt where you were at, open above the feeding of the 5,000, they, was, they did sit on some grassland. Here, for the feeding of the 4,000, they had to sit down right where they were in the dirt, out in the desert, so to speak. And so Jesus performed this miracle uh, again and began to feed uh, these uh, four thousands. And notice now, he don't give them just a, a snack. He don't give them just enough to kind of, you know, hold them off so they can get to town so they don't faint. Jesus gives them enough food. He gives them almost like a banquet. He gives them far more than they could even ask or think. That's the kind of God that you and I serve. That he just don't give us just enough to get us by. He gives us more than we could even ever ask or even think. And notice uh, in Mark's interpretation of the same miracle now, notice what Mark uh, does. Uh, notice what Mark says uh, over and above uh, what, how Matthew approaches it. I'm going to pick up reading now in verse 5, uh, verse 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, and verse number 10. Mark chapter 8, listen what it says on your screens there. And it says this, and he asked them, um, as he entered, uh, and when he entered Capernaum, uh, in verse, talking about verse 5, and then when he entered uh, into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the, the palsy, uh, grievously uh, tormented. And this is what he says. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and tell and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy of thou sh- uh, that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am the man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say this to you. Go, Jesus said, and I say this unto this man. Go, and he goeth. He's saying to Jesus about his authority. If I tell a man to go, he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. In verse 10, and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and still and said unto them that follow. Verily I say unto you. I have found no great faith, no, not in Israel. Now, that's amazing because 
Uh, in this particular lesson here, what we discover and what we see here is something that, that kind of really kind of jumps out to us here. Uh, I'm just kind of strolling down uh, that, that Jesus uh, does something that's very unique uh, in, in, the, in this manner. Now, Jesus took uh, the little food that his disciples had taken up and he multiplied it to supply more food for over five over 4,000 men, not including women and children. And so we see Jesus still performing miracles in between uh, uh, of this miraculous miracle. Matthew account in chapter 15 says there were 4,000 men beside women and children. That's what Matthew said. In other words, there were about between 12 to 15,000 persons who were fed on this particular miracle. Uh, and upon gathering the leftovers, uh, we found read earlier in Matthew translation and, Ma and Matthew's translation as well. Uh, in the leftover, there were seven baskets full. And we see here, and driving home, this point is this: that the body of Christ is inexhaustible. The body of Christ is inexhaustible. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ gave evidence of this by repeating the miracle of feeding so many with so little. And the favor of God is renewed as our wants and our necessities are. Your, your wants and your necessities are never, ever greater than the miracle that God can perform in your life. It doesn't matter uh, uh, what it may be. It's never greater than what God can perform uh, in your life. And you got to keep that assurance in your spirit today. It doesn't matter how great uh, the situation can be that you may be confronted with. It, may, it does not matter uh, how profound the problem may be that you're grappling with. It's never greater than what God can perform as it relates to a miracle breakthrough in the life of his people. And so we drive home here to see in this particular lesson here how that Jesus does something that's so very unique uh, to, uh, to his disciples uh, and before the crowd because he did not want to send them away uh, hungry or fasting so that they were, he said, the word he used was faint before they got home. And so even in this Lenten season that we are in right now, those who are listening to me uh, prayerfully, if you have not started your, your, your celebration of what Lent is or what it means, I will tell you it is a time that you make commitment to God. It is a time that you fast and pray. And as I said to you a little earlier, fasting may not necessarily mean you have to fast a food. It may be if you've got some kind of health challenge and you have to eat some type of food. Uh, it may be you may have to fast from um, uh, food, I mean uh, from music. It may be you have to fast from watching your favorite show. You're so faithful to it. You may have to give that up. Be willing to give it up perhaps maybe two or three, four days. Uh, you may not be able to do all 40 like many, many persons cannot, but you may be able to do it for, four, for 40 hours. I don't know. It may be uh, for four hours. I'm saying you must start somewhere with prayer, meditation, uh, reading scriptures, and in that process of fasting, Asking God to give you strength as you go through the process of growing uh, in your, your faith journey. And I cannot put, a, put enough stress, enough emphasis uh, on this importance. Now, what I also noticed in this lesson, as I told you a little earlier about the feeding of this 4,000, uh, the circumstances, how Christ prov provided the food. Uh, uh, there are two important circumstances that are noted in this particular text of Jesus feeding uh, this crowd, which will show the greatness of his miracle uh, in providing food for his listeners. First of all, we saw the largeness of the crowd because the scripture says the multitude being very great, the largeness of the crowd. And providing food for a few is nothing special compared to providing food for a great multitude. And you notice something now, Everybody got different eating um, dispositions. Some food people eat light. 
Some people don't take as much to get them full. Others, they can eat quite a bit until they get to the place they uh, feel comfortable and they're full. So notice now, Jesus let, made sure nobody left him hungry. They all left, not with a snack. They all left eating like in a banquet. Not only you saw the largeness of the crowd, it says that the great multitude that was great, but then we see the lack with the crowd. That we, again, we look at it in verse 1 again. Uh, it says, having nothing to eat. The lack with the crowd, they had nothing to eat. This lack of food set the stage for a great food miracle again, as so it was did in uh, the feeding of the 5,000. And then we look at the compassion that the Savior provided for the food. And at verse 2 and 3. And I say that because the scripture says that he had compassion. He was moved with compassion and concern. And so what we're saying here is this. In verse 2 and 3 of, of Mark's gospel, the compassion of Christ was involved in this great miracle feeding, providing food for a large Multitude. We saw the report of the compassion. It says here in that latter part of verse three, I'm sorry, verse uh, yeah, verse uh, one. I have compassion on the multitude. I have compassion on the multitude. And guess what? You and I as Christians should have compassion for people if they're hungry and they're really in need of food. We should have compassion uh, for those who uh, find themselves. Are in need. And not only should we have compassion, that we see the report showing he had compassion, <clears throat> excuse me, but we also see the reason for the compassion. And what was the reason for the compassion? Well, first of all, the faithfulness of the listener. They were faithful to listen to Jesus for three days. <clears throat> That's why he had compassion and concern for them. Number two, the food. The food problem of the listener was that nobody brought any food with them and so Jesus knew he had to do something about that because the scripture says they have nothing to eat. And then thirdly, the fainting of the listeners. And what do I mean? Right down the latter part of the verse three when it says, if I send them away fasting to their own houses, here it is, they will faint by the way for divers of them came from far. So the crowd had gone a long, long time without eating that a journey of extend would, extension would come as a result of their losing strength and having to stop along the way. And so the Bible says he has compassion. He had compassion to, for the food that was going to be provided for them. He knew they were going to faint if he tried to send them away uh, to eat. And so what did Jesus do? He tells them to sit down. And then you watch the counsel in this lesson. A lot of part of the verse four, the counsel. What do I mean by that in providing the food? Christ and the disciples conferred together about the food problem and how they were going to resolve that food problem. And one or two things you can get from that. Uh, in verse four, as I spodulate, walking through the verses now more closely, we see the solicitation for the council. And what does it mean by the solicitation? We see that Jesus called his disciples unto him. He consults them. He solicits them. Right then verse 4. And he did what did he do? He to teach the disciples a lesson about his power. Christ called them together to address the food problem. The council about providing the food. And then we see the skepticism in the council. As I come to the close, the skepticism in the council. The disciples, in spite of the previous food miracles and the feeding of the 5,000, show great skepticism that they could solve this food problem. First, the skepticism about the procurement. His disciples answered him, from whence can a man satisfy these men with bread? <laughs> How can we procure the food to even feed them? And the first thing the disciples said was that there were no places for them that they could procure enough food for the multitude. There's no way we can get enough bread and food to feed this crowd. 
even though they had uh, more than they thought they had. But they forgot about Jesus in the, in the mix of things. And then we see then what I would call, second thing, the skepticism about the place. And this is what it says. We're here in the wilderness. The disciples were concerned about where they were at and not who were there with them in the desert. They were worried about the wilderness itself. And the disciples emphasized uh, that the location of the crowd was also a pro prohibiting factor in supplying them food. In other words, Jesus, we are here in the desert. <laughs> we, 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 we're not going to be able to get any more bread. We're not going to be able to go get no more fish out here. We, we're in a, a dry place. And Jesus does something. He Not only does he give the counsel how you're going to provide the bread and the food, not only does he have the challenge about making the provision to feed this crowd, but then we follow out that he has to give the command, the command before he provides the food. As with so many blessings, the food miracle blessings is preceded by a command. And I believe many people miss out on their blessings because they flunk out on the command. Jesus tell you to do step one, two, and three. We do step two and, and we do skip. We skip step two and go right under step three. And Christ said, no, you got to do step one, two, and three. But most folk uh, don't have the patience. Uh, if you're not moving quick enough, well, maybe I can assist God. And they miss out on many blessings because they, they themselves actually do not follow the command before the blessings. And so we see the objective of the command. He commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And then we see the obedience to the command. The crowd obviously obeyed, which was a mark of faith. For they had, been, they had to sit before they were fed. See, the obedience, they had to sit before they could be fed. I'm going to say it again. That's the miracle now. By being obedient to the command, the, the objective of that command was before you can eat anything, you have to sit. You have to be in a seated position to receive your food blessing. And that's what Jesus was providing uh, for uh, this crowd. And last but not least, not only did he provide that, but then we see how he created in the providing for the food. Three actions of Christ were involved in creating the food to provide a meal for this multitude. The barring, he took the seven loaves. Before God can bless, we have to give it to him. He cannot use what we have unless it is surrendered to him. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want God to bless you, he's saying to you, you have to get it to me. You have to put it in my hands and watch me perform the miracle. And then we see the blessing. He says he gave thanks. Verse 6. Two things in that is, first, where he gave thanks. He gave thanks to God in public. Gave God thanks in public. Some professing Christians are too cowardly to give thanks for their meal in public. You ought not to be ashamed when you sit down to eat, if it's in a restaurant, wherever it may be, you shouldn't be concerned about what other people think about you. You, you close your eyes and you whisper a prayer asking God to bless the food that you're going to consume. You are not ashamed. You're not afraid to let people see you bow and whisper a prayer of the blessing of the table. And this crowd through the disciples saw the blessing because it said they gave thanks and they received the blessing. And then we see the breaking within the blessing. What do you mean by break? Many things have to be broken before they are useful. Breaking can be painful, ladies and gentlemen, but it also is often necessary to be productive. In order for you to be broken, you cannot be healed. In order for there to be some tears, you cannot smile or shout. There got to be some tearing, some breaking. And so... Jesus and these disciples with the feeding of this 4,000 men, not including the women and the children had to be broken. And sometimes God has to break our stubbornness 
and the will of us even in our hearts to make us be useful to him. And I conclude by saying this. The people did eat. They were filled, verse 8 tells us. They were filled to the brim. They could not eat anymore. And when you can't eat anymore, that's when you get up and leave the table because you know then I'm full. I can't eat anymore. And so Jesus made sure they had plenty of food to eat. They did not leave hungry. So they would not faint going back home. Because remember now, they were with him for three days. As I conclude by saying this to you, are you willing to give up something? Are you willing to make a, a decision to uh, give up something that could help you draw closer to God? Are you willing to sacrifice something? Are you willing to, are you willing to walk in the, the place where God may even have to break you, stretch you, or even bind you a little bit uh, for you to really see his power and see him display his a miracle ability? Are you willing to do that? Because in order to be made whole, sometimes we have to be broken. And for that reason, as he broke the bread, as he broke the fish, he made more bread, he pulled and made more fish. And so maybe God is breaking you to make more, to bless more, to give more in to you. And if that be the case, if you're in that place today, he may be doing it for a reason, to better you and for you in your life and for your breakthrough. It may be physically, mentally, your breakthrough may very well even be spiritually and financially. But you trust God, even if he puts you in a desert place, a dry place, trust me, if God placed you there, he has a way of making a vision to make sure that you're going to be well taken care of in your place of of hunger, your place of need. I want to say thank you for joining us today. I look forward to you joining us on tomorrow evening or tomorrow afternoon as we continue to do our service of giving food boxes to our community. Uh, we certainly look forward to you joining us as we get closer to uh, the Easter celebration. We have our Holy Week services coming up. Uh, we also going to encourage you to join us for Easter here at the church and our Easter worship service outside. We look forward to you joining us, that you will come and bring your lawn chairs and so forth and join us for worship on that beautiful day of Resurrection Sunday. I encourage you to get the word out, tell others, and invite them to join us uh, as well. We look forward to you celebrating and praying uh, during this Lenten and holiday season of Lent, that you pray, fast, meditate, read the scriptures, and trust God in prayer. I say to you, until then, you be blessed, you continue to be highly favored in the Lord, and you continue to walk in the newness of God. As God is stretching you and as God is breaking you, he's making you anew. I say go in peace, go in faith. And remember, be safe, be well, and be cautious in your movement. God bless you. May God bless you and your family as you pray for us. We'll pray for you. Be blessed and be blessed in the Lord. Until the next time of this week, we we'll look forward to you joining us in these series of the miracles of Jesus performing in the word of God. Be blessed and have a marvelous day.